Hey guys, I just discovered another incredible way you can use PowerPoint's Morph Transition to enhance the impact of your presentations. Check this out. Not bad, huh? Now, here's the funny thing. To achieve that effect, I used the morph transition in combination with the 3D rotation effect. And this is a feature you, you're probably very familiar with because it's been a, in a part of PowerPoint for probably up to 15 years now. In this video, I'm going to show you the simple ways I combined both of them to be able to achieve this beautiful effect entirely within PowerPoint. Behind the slide is not a tutorial series. I just take you through the editing view of slides and sequences that I've already created so that you can get some tips and insights from what I did and apply them to your own process. My name is Chubike Roy Ago and you are absolutely welcome to another episode of Behind the Slide. Honestly, I have no idea why I have always overlooked these 3D effects in PowerPoint never bothered to use them before. I just saw them as some cheap and tacky way to try and make your slides pop by 3 d -ing your objects. I think I should trademark that word. On this particular day, I wanted to explore the possibility of using a set of moving isometric 3D objects to illustrate a particular idea on a slide deck I was working on. And I stumbled once again on 3D rotation. And I'm like, could this be the solution? So I gave it a shot. So not only did I find ways to do what I wanted, but I found that I could even do more. It turns out that in this same 3D effects group, there is also perspective 3D rotation. This means that I can make the angles realistic. So how did I create this particular sequence? Let's go behind the slide and take a closer look. Welcome to Behind the Slide. This is how the slides for this particular sequence were put together. As you can see um, in this, uh, by the left here, column here, um, these are all the slides that I used to create that animation. Not many, as I had mentioned earlier, it is the morph transition that was used to achieve this. So, the, so um, the morph transition doesn't require you executing animations on each object. Just position them where they need to be and then create a new slide and apply the transition to that slide and everything moves into the right position um, as an animation. So this is where I began the, the process. On this slide where everything is actually facing the camera because it's easier of course to set your objects in their default position and then begin to animate from there. But as you can see each subsequent slide I have given each of the objects a 3D rotation, which is what um, this, this brief uh, look at behind the slide is about. In each of them, I just basically gave a different angle. So um, what I want to show you now is how I created the objects and how I positioned them using a 3D rotation. I'm not exactly going to create a new set of slides. I'm just going to point to the actions I took to achieve what you're seeing on screen. Now, these are simple, rounded, rectangular objects. Nothing complicated about them. I had them different colors, different um, effects on, the, on them because I was testing out how these things behave when you apply the 3D rotation to them. So I, I, can, I can basically focus on this one now. I introduced the objects from shapes. I, over here you have the uh, rectangle, rounded corners. I just selected that and then basically drew that. Um, adjusted these, the yellow knob to, to uh, modify the level of roundedness. And I also went to the outline, the shape outline and you know, selected no outline, so that there's no outline there. And I, of course I applied the, the color, the, the, the shape uh, color that I wanted. And that's how I have this. Now you can notice, you can see that it has a 3D look and that is because I also decided that we want to test 
whether we can get an even more three-dimensional look by applying a bevel to this object. So what I did was to go to shape effects, um, right here, shape effects, and I selected um, bevel. Okay, now I just went to the traditional bevel here and I adjusted it for this, the edges. I went to the actual properties um, 3D options here. Okay, so right there in the 3D format, you have the bevel. I've already selected it and it has given me attributes 6 points by 6 points. You can choose whatever works for you. Um, I can increase it, I can reduce it. It, doesn't, it really doesn't matter. You can see the type of bevel that I, I selected, it's the top bevel. Um, but it's, it's this one that has an angle, so you can see that um, all I need to do is select that and you see that it is, it's got that sharp angular look just the way this one does. So I think I just probably reduced the, the um, default to 3.5 and 5 here, which if I do that here, you'll see that, you know, it gets you the same, pretty much the same level of, uh, of bevel level of bevel sounds cool so we um we, once we have that object now and i did pretty much the same thing for this the difference with this is that i also now introduced the transparency to the fill so you see the solid fill here i just increased the transparency to 50 percent that is all i did there so if i do the same thing here i'm just pushing this here so you can see the transparency effect I increase the transparency to I type in 50 there and I and I have that so that's pretty much all I did for this particular object so um, let me undo that now if I, also this one has text in it I just went ahead and started typing text into it you know PowerPoint once you start typing text when you have an object like this selected it will introduce the text into that object and that's what I did and I aligned it left okay so these are separate objects entirely um, just so that you're aware, these two are separate objects. I had to I had to set their own um, 3D rotation individually. But these ones are together, these ones are together, and so on. Now, this is how we basically created the object. Okay, now, how do we animate it? We make a copy of that slide, okay? Okay, you know what? I'm going to cut this and put it in a completely new slide, okay? Um, new slide, um, give, that, give that the background, format background. Feel. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to drop this in a new slide, okay? And to be able to now create the morph transition effect, I will duplicate that slide, okay? And then ensure that the morph transition is applied to the duplicate slide. Here's morph in the transitions panel. Morph is the first on the list. You can imagine for them to have put it at the first beginning of the list, you, you can get the idea that morph has a completely special function from just a regular transition. So I select Morph and apply that, that transition there. Hold on, I haven't animated it yet before I start to apply the Morph anyway. It really doesn't matter. I can go ahead and create the 3D rotation now. Back to the shape effects. I, on the effects list, I have 3D rotation there. See, after 3D format, it's 3D rotation. So I, I go into 3D rotation and select the rotation that I want. Now you can see here when you pick, select the drop down on 3D rotation, you have a whole array of 3D types. The first set is labeled parallel. All these guys, they have the kind of 3D that in the 3D space they call isometric, where you don't get perspective. Sometimes that is easier to work with depending on what you're trying to achieve. But if you're looking for a more artistic and realistic, more realistic look, perspective, of course, mimics real life. I actually did enjoy um, the effects that I got using the parallel 3D. I mean, I can show you that, that example of that. It was cool enough. I could do a lot of great things with this. Um, however, I wanted to get more out of this. I wanted to get more. So I went for perspective. And this gives me something more real. This is how real life looks. So the beauty of, uh, of this is that you also have these parameters here that make it possible for you to adjust your 3D rotation to suit what your scene, the scene you're trying to create. Because in, in this particular case, we actually have a scene that includes other objects. So you know that each object is going to have a perspective that is slightly different because of its position. I mean, if you understand 
how perspective works in art and design. You, you know, you would be able to tweak in accordance to what your eye is, 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 is picking up from the scene. You have to use your own understanding of perspective to make this as realistic as possible. So in these parameters, these buttons here, or, or with these numbers here, you can actually make these adjustments and get whatever rotation you're looking for. Look at that, I mean, that, this is exciting. You can rotate across any axis. You know, you can rotate across any axis and get your desired effect. Amazing, amazing. So this is, this is for you, the designer. And you see the beauty of this thing is that it even puts lighting on your object as you rotate. Look at that, look at that. This is awesome, boom, look at that. That is, this is so beautiful. So you can have absolute fun just rotating this thing to a position that works for you. You don't have to make yours as complicated as my scene is. You can keep it as simple as possible. Don't forget that this was just me experimenting. The chances that you're going to be having a, a, a scene using this effect that is as complex as this are very slim. You're probably going to use it to just show one object or two. You keep it simple, you're going to get as beautiful an effect as possible. So with the morph transition, let us see what our animation looks like. Pretty simple, pretty cool. Okay, now let me make that a little more complex. Um, Okay, let's see what that looks like. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, let's uh, go through our slides again to see how we did that. Now look at this. These guys are all set straight. On the next slide, we all have them rotated using the 3D rotation. As you can see, I also rotated the text using the 3D rotation effect. Yes, it took a little time, but it was worth it. Now you can also see that I in introduced drop shadows to each of these objects. They all have drop shadows and if I click this you will see that in the effects panel there's a shadow and I've set the, the I picked a type of shadow here even though I customized it greatly so you wouldn't necessarily see that I selected any one from here and then I also give it a color black and then tweak the transparency tweak the size the blur it depends on what you want to achieve that will determine what what you set here. I, if I increase the blur too much, it'll, it'll be almost invisible. If I reduce it too much, it'll be too hard a shadow, as you can see. So I kept it at a level that is agreeable, so to speak. Um, so uh, that's, that's what I did for a few of them. This object has a shadow. This object has a shadow. Um, I don't think this one has a shadow. Uh, okay, they all have shadows. <laughs> the text have shadow as well. So when I animate, um, pardon that. When I move them in the next slide, I also tweak the parameters of the shadow. As you can see, I would, I've gone in and I've actually adjusted the angle of the shadows for this one. Let me go back to this first slide. Let's look at the shadow properties. See, the angle is zero here. Okay. The distance is 13 points. That's, those are, these are the two key things to adjust, shadow, and, uh, angle, and distance. Now look at it here. The angle is 339, and the distance is 32 points. Just to be able to get this, you would you tweak as it suits you. All I wanted to do was just to create as natural and a realistic effect as possible. So I did the same for these guys. For the text, you can see that they have shadows too, and shadows moved. I did the same thing, I had to tweak the shadows. Let's go back to this guy so you can see what the shadow parameters are. You see the angle here is now 174, distance is still 32. So have fun, do amazing things with this stuff. Experiment, go as far as it can possibly take you. Uh, let's just run this uh, sequence one more time. I did this particular slide just, just to be a little bit silly. And let's actually start from a lying down position and grow into the actual animation itself. So here we go one more time. Man, I just love the way this flows. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> Possibility excites me. Every time you conquer one thing, you feel a sense of elevation. You feel more grateful, more powerful, more free. 
I made this video not only to show you how to do the thing itself, but to motivate you to activate your curiosity. I believe it is more important that every time you have a piece of communication to create, you find the courage to push past what you are accustomed to and try new things. Make demands on your tools, man. They're hiding stuff from you. So dig in and pull that stuff out. It's all yours to put to use. Combine different features with each other and see what you get. What's the worst that can happen? Once again, I thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. That will help me know if you would like to see more of this kind of content. Also, if you've explored other ways to use the, the 3D rotation effects in PowerPoint, please share it with us in the comments. I would really love to know. And don't forget, if you're not creating something, at least create an environment that makes creativity possible for someone else. See you soon. What's inside of you? What do you dream of? What pictures come alive when you drift off? Whatever gives you joy with the sunrise, that thing that makes you want to work all night, that's what you place your stakes on. I'm talking about a manifestation. Don't be afraid that you won't get a thumbs up, because you're going to fall a lot as you grow up. If you want to paint houses, go ahead.